interesting. So then as far as how hobbyists should be applying vet care as just a general practice, what, what are some tips for keeping your collection healthy and, and thriving? Um, well, I think, I think the first thing to say is, you know, uh, every animal, as far as I'm concerned, sh- that is kept in captivity should be entitled to veterinary care if it gets sick. Mm-hmm. So I think if you're keeping animals, register with a local exotic vet, have a plan in place, know where it is you're going to go should you ever find that you have a sick animal. And I think it's a good idea to build up a rapport and a relationship with your exotic vet. You know, you can send them emails and ask them for, you know, for for, for what you should be doing. Should, do I need to come in? You know, does this need to be seen? Or could, is there any advice you can provide, you know, just, just to prevent a problem maybe from escalating or getting worse? Um, so I think, I think, I think there's that side of things. I think knowing where to go. I think then there are just some some general common sense principles. I mean, I think, you know, one thing I would say is make sure you quarantine all new arrivals. You know, mm-hmm. don't don't put a new animal in with the bulk of your collection. Keep it separate. I mean, even if you don't have a separate room where you can keep it, you know, keep it in a different enclosure on the other side of the room, away from all your other animals. Make sure you're using sensible biosecurity protocols wash your hands you know between handling that animal don't use the same feeding utensils don't use the same don't mix water bowls you know don't if you feed a snake a a rat and and it refuses it and you know that snake is a new snake and it's in quarantine don't then go and feed that rat to you know one of your other animals because you don't want it to go to waste because that's a brilliant way to, to spread disease so i think quarantine is hugely important um, I think know some of the common infectious conditions that that particular species is prone to. So, you know, as far as boa constrictors are concerned, for example, I think arena virus, you know, which causes this nasty disease called IBD, should be on every boa keeper's radar. And mm-hmm. ideally, you know, if you buy a new boa, test it, you know, and, and the same if you buy a green tree python, you know, test it for nidovirus which is a huge infectious disease that affects those. If you're keeping amphibians, you know, you, you should consider some chytrid testing maybe for new arrivals. Um, and I think, you know, checking animals for parasites routinely, you know, I think, I think at least, at least once a year, ideally twice a year, ideally, you know, send a fecal off and, and just mm-hmm. check you don't, you aren't dealing with a parasite problem. And, you know, and have a first aid kit maybe would be another another piece of advice I'd give. Have some iodine that you can clean a wound with, um, you know, and and it's just principles like that. You know, I think I think I think those would be my top th- top four tips, however mm-hmm. many tips that was. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's great. Oh, so what about um, as far as checkups go? Like, what are your thoughts there? If, should, should people be bringing their animals in for a yearly checkup? Or do you think a, a yearly fecal is better to, to go and just kind of pay attention? I guess the question is, when should an animal be brought into the clinic? Yeah, I mean, I think um, I think a, a health check by a vet is always a good idea. I mean, we as vets are very used to picking up on subtle signs of early illness. So right. I think having a physical exam where a vet looks in the animal's mouth and it looks in the coena, which is the slit in the roof of the mouth or the opening to the glottis and you know palpating the abdomen and having a listen with a stethoscope, I think that's hugely beneficial. I think that's a great way to pick up potential problems before they get worse before they cause clinical disease often um i think but i think you know i think if you're in a position to do that for all your animals as long as it's not one of these very delicate species that is likely to get very stressed with the handling and the transport and everything else i think i would recommend an annual health check for all reptiles if you're in a position to do it and i think certainly pet keepers you know people keeping a bearded dragon or a corn snake i i think they they should all be going to see their vet once a year for a health check i think if you've got a very very large collection um it may not always be practical to take a hundred animals into the vet um but I think, um, you know, you could even consider whether you have an annual visit from the vet or at least, um, you know, if, if you've got sick animals, you know, it, it might be that from a population medicine point of view, you know, your vet is able to sort of look at photos of your setup and your collection and sort of identify areas where, you know, there could be a disease transmission risk and, and that sort of thing. So, yeah, I mean, I think I think 
I think ideally all animals will be checked at least once a year by a vet. Mm. And I think, I think definitely that should be the case for, for people that just have, you know, a few animals. So, yeah. and then you also mentioned having an at-home first aid kit, which I think is a, a great idea, I, mm. but that's probably a thin line between people doing at-home surgery <laughs> and people doing at-home wound care. Yeah. So where are you as a vet comfortable with people ch- treating their animals at home without necessarily bringing them in? Like, is there certain small you know, skin lesions and whatnot, or maybe burns, or should they always be brought in and then at home treatment should take place? I mean, I think if it's a small superficial wound and you want to clean it with some tamadine, I think that's perfectly acceptable, you know, and obviously if things aren't getting better, if it's swelling up, if it's getting pussy or whatever, then I think, you know, clearly you need to consult the vet. Um, I wouldn't really advocate anybody does any kind of surgical procedure at home, <laughs> yeah. really, you know, and, and, and you see some videos on YouTube and you just think, Oh yes. my goodness. Yeah. Um, and, and sometimes it's really experienced breeders that are doing things like that. And you just think this is like, this is setting a really, a really bad example. This is like Joe exotic style, um, yes. on YouTube. <laughs> well, I, I, I know Kevin McCurley just posted a video not that long ago of just this wild at home surgery they did with that leucistic cobra. Was it, is it a King Cobra? I forget what it is, but it, it's a Ven- I think it's a King Cobra. And yeah, he was like cutting out, uh, I think it was a parasite or something under the scales, but it was like, or it was an inflamed fang. Or it was crazy. And it, it just yeah. seemed like if you have I don't, a I don't of- know. I mean, I, 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 it's difficult. To, I don't think I've seen that particular example, but I, I just think if you're, if you need to cut anything open, that's probably best done by somebody who is clinically trained. Yeah, I totally agree. <laughs> and and if for some reason you think you're okay at doing it, at least don't post it on YouTube and show everybody like yeah, how you can so take the scalpel and cut in yeah, there it's, it's, a, it's a difficult one but yes i mean yeah i think it's i think i think it's a bit, bit, bit dodgy isn't it yeah yeah so as, as far as the common illnesses and, and conditions you see brought in like you're saying you, you see a lot of the same species are a lot yeah. of those same species experiencing the same ailments yeah often um 